Well, I want to talk about competition. Uh, obviously, uh, Sprint uh, has shown a little bit of life uh, with the new CEO, Marcelo Claré. Uh, what do you think about Marcelo? Have you met him, for one? And, and what I, do you th ha I have not. What do you no. think about the task ahead for him? This, he's got his hands full. Um, and, you know, I think there's, you know, let, let's understand, it, the guy's been here about a month, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, you, you got to give him points for showing activity. And so, uh, you know, I think one of the most important things we don't need Sprint to fail for mm -hmm. us to succeed. That, this, that's not what this is about. I don't think they think about you know, us that same way either. The AT&T and Verizon control 85% of the profitability of this industry right. and over 75% of the sub one gigahertz you know, spectrum, 70% um, of the market share. So right. you know, just by doing the things that are right for customers, there's plenty of room to grow. So you think he's got you, his hands full. You think you both Sprint and T-Mobile can actually grow in this market? Oh, of course. And, right. and but you know, remember, um, we are for, in a totally different. We've had five quarters of over a million net ads of customers, mm. and you know, we're at a peak of our growth. They're trying to get to the point where they stop bleeding. Right. So let's not move from they made a few announcements to they're growing. They got their hands full, and frankly they still have a long way to go before their network is competitive. Mm. So the harder part for Sprint would be that they unfortunately had to get into price competition right. um, before their network was ready. And I, I think that's his words. When yep. your network's not up to par, you have to compete on price. But if you, if you could, you would do that later. You mentioned before, I mean, when you made the comment about surpassing Sprint this year, you probably took off oh, some yeah, higher-ups. Oh, yeah, put a fork ups. in it. They're, you know, we're, they're done. They're done? Yeah. They're done. Yeah, we're not there yet, but come on. I mean, so you say Sprint's done. It's funny you say that, given, you know, up until a month ago, you guys were seemingly headed towards a merger. Um, I know never publicly confirmed, but the fact that it actually collapsed publicly the way it did was kind of surprising and rare. But for you, I mean, how do you approach, do you approach T-Mobile differently uh, what this deal, you know, basically did. You know, listen, um, we, what was most important to me in this entire period is the same thing, is that I want to keep the momentum of my company continuing, my mm -hmm. employees focused, the brand being defined as right. the thing that we're about, and right through all those rumors and right past, we continue. And I, I think more difficult for them is it seemed as if their answer to how to fix their company was T-Mobile. Right. So they mm -hmm. had to announce that the answer that they were banking on mm. wasn't happening. Sprint, Verizon have all announced special plans for it. Sprint has a specific plan, a $50 plan for the iPhone, and Verizon's offering a free one, I guess, if you trade in an old iPhone. What do you think of these programs? Are you also thinking about a, a promotion of your own? Yeah, listen, we're not, um, uh, we're not announcing our iPhone plans yet, and that's something you do in partnership with Apple. and. You know, I'm actually surprised some of these. Uh, They're coming out uh, so quickly. Uh, or, or were they, you know, were they authorized, mm. and, and where are they? And um, trickery is my first reaction. Okay. You know, trickery. Come on. The um, I was a little surprised at the Sprint plan. You just had a fifty dollar plan, but you missed the iPhone for life twenty dollar, which is actually a rental. Mm. But it's what it really is is it's a financing plan with no residual value. I mean, we talked about Sprint, but what AT and T and Verizon? I mean, these are two really your two big targets, right? There's two hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of revenue between AT and T and Verizon. That's more than the GDPs of Portugal or Denmark. Mm -hmm. They. They have a built-in inherent reason to not change. You know, in Verizon more than anybody. Why would they change? They're having a party. They're, well, they're making they're so much financially money. Financially, they're doing right? very well. But, yeah. but we are doing just fine. Beautifully moving. And if they're happy, I'm happy. If the porting ratios stay two to one mm -hmm. with the whole industry, mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time. Do you think by that, with the, that same situation, that, that Sprint can actually mount its own comeback? And, Gain share. Well, you really got a sprint thing going on. Are they just giving you a little no, you know, payola on about the side? Are no. you afraid of the guy because he's so big? Or what <laughs> the hell is going on? Come on, give them some time. Right. They, you know, they're, di they're bleeding customers. They've got to go through layoffs. Right. Their brand is miserable. Look at the store across the street. It's an ugly yellow. There's no people there. They got. Hang on, sorry about that. You got stuff hanging on the <laughs> windows. And, and the guy came in and made some aggressive price you know, yes. changes. Um, you know, 10 lines for X, 
by the way, the price for 10 lines is the same as the price for two lines. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. And, and you know, Framley got killed. The poor right. hamster has no job. <laughs> the, the groups of Framley members are stranded, so people's prices are going to go down. All of their pricing plans are only for new customers, which means their loyal customers are pissed off. Right. So you got some work to do. But let's not declare victory. It's a long game.